Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? These often quoted verses have to be about more than physical death. As we heard our text from the Gospel today of John and these verses preceding in this story of Mary and Martha and Lazarus, if this text refers only to physical death, then it would have very little meaning to most of us. Very few, if any of us, know of Jesus as the resurrection and the life as Mary and Martha came to know him. Very few, if any of us, have had the experience of seeing someone die, remain dead for four days, and then be brought back to life. And if any of us did see someone raised from the dead, we would do probably what no human being has been known to do. We would probably run and outrun the speed of light. Yes. Thus, although the immediate context for these verses is the physical death of Lazarus, we understand that the words have a much broader meaning. <clears throat> to begin with, physical death is not the only death we encounter. Some of us are spiritually dead. We function on routine and we function on habit. Because we go through the motions of religion, we think we are alive. The inner workings of a clock are constantly moving, but a clock is not alive. An automobile and airplane are built for the sole purpose of providing movement at great speed, but an automobile and an airplane are not alive. There's a difference between the mechanics of motion and the movement of life. Some of us go through the motions, but we have no life. Some of us go through the motions of religion, but we have no life. We may go through the motions of a marriage or of a significant relationship, but we have no life. Some of us go through the motions of sex, but there is no life in the intimacy. Can I tell some candid truths here for a moment? Never get the motions of sex confused with making love. All you need for sex are the appropriate body parts. But you need life for love. You need heart and soul for love. That's why some of us are always putting ourselves in positions to be used and abused. We believe that the way you get love is through your limbs. But limbs can work mechanically. Limbs without life Limbs without heart, limbs without soul and commitment are just going through the motions. If there is nothing beyond the physical, uh, then when you close your limbs or put your limb away, you will still be love starved and spirit dead. Can I tell it this morning? The next time somebody tells you, if you love me, you will do blank for me, and you tell them, there is a difference between limbs and love, and that you are into love and not just into motion. There are people whose limbs are not very functional, but they have love, and that love makes them almost glow. I'm going to leave that alone right now and go back to G-rated. Every day, some of us go through the motions in our job or in our school, but we have no life. Uh, there are those who are dead to conscience. The first time we did something wrong, conscience screamed so loudly that we thought we would shrivel from shame. But after repeating our transgressions over and over and over again, we 
don't even hear conscience speak anymore. Uh, we may talk about wrong and right, but conscience is dead. Conscience is dead in us, and our emotions of righteousness have no life. To those of us who have a mechanical existence of motion and no life, to those of us who have become dead to conscience, oh, Jesus has a word. I am the resurrection and the life. And note that there is a difference between life through resurrection and life through giving birth. Uh, to give birth is to bring new life into the world. To resurrect is to bring back life that has died. Those of us who have never known Jesus as Lord, those persons need to be born anew in Christ. But many of us who have already been born again need resurrection. We need to find again what we once had. We need the restoration of what was lost. We need another chance at what the death of going through the motions has taken away. When Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, you remember and told him that he must be born again? That was life through birth. But when Jesus released the man of his demonic legion, that was life through resurrection. Uh, when Jesus called Matthew, Thomas, and the other disciples, that was birth. But on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon those disciples, that was resurrection. Uh, when Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount to the masses of folk, that was birth. But when he told the woman caught in adultery, go in peace and sin no more, that was resurrection. When Jesus healed the man born blind, that was birth. When he gave living water to a much married Samaritan woman at Jacob's well, that was resurrection. Uh, when Jesus called Simon Peter to preach, that was birth. But when he forgave Simon Peter his three denials, that was resurrection. When Jesus called Saul on that Damascus road, that was birth. But when he called Lazarus back from the grave, that was resurrection. Resurrection, And some of us need resurrection. Like Lazarus, we need to be called back from the grave. Back from darkness to light. Back from bondage to freedom. Back from where the majority consensus has placed us. Back from an impossible situation and undeliverable circumstances. We need to be called back from death into life. Uh, you know, when your favorite, or our favorite phrase is, we used to, <laughs> we need resurrection. <laughs> uh, when our favorite song, as they used to sing in my grandmother's church, what peaceful hours I once enjoyed, so sweet their memory still, we need resurrection. Uh, when all we do is go through the motions, we need Resurrection. When our love has waxed cold and we're afraid to trust anybody, we need resurrection. When we've been hurt and we can't get over it, abused and can't recover from it, swamped by sin and can't repent of it, we need resurrection. Oh, beloved, the good news is this. I know who is resurrection. Uh, there are a lot of things I don't know, but I do know not what is, but who is resurrection. You see, our faith is not just about believing some things, it's about knowing somebody. And I know who is resurrection. I may not be able to quote verse and chapter of the Bible like some folk, but I know who is resurrection. I may not have all the gifts that some others may have, but I know who is resurrection. I may not be as smart or as righteous as some others, but I know who is resurrection. When I've sinned and fallen short of God's glory, when I've gone as far as I can go and don't have strength to go any further, I know who is resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live. If you believe
believe. If you believe, believe my blood can cleanse you. If you believe, believe my word is true. If you believe, believe my presence is always with you. If you believe, believe my power can restore you. If you believe, believe my intercession will bring mercy. Believe that one day I'm coming back for you and you will have resurrection power. Resurrection power. You know, resurrection power means bouncing back power. And you know, some people will use the expression when you ask them how they feel, some of you have used it. They'll say, I'm alive and kicking. I'm alive and kicking. And that's your testimony when Jesus, the resurrection and life, resurrects you. I'm alive and kicking. Because people have been digging ditches and setting traps for you, but that's all right. With Jesus in my life, I'm alive and kicking. I've had to come up with what they call the rough side of the mountain. Sometimes I don't know how I was going to make it over, but through it all, I'm alive and kicking. They thought 